All right, Viking fans, get ready for my 53-man roster 3.0 next in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Skull World, brought to you by MinnesotaSports.com. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Skull World. I'm also doing a live show on the Purple Code Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. And we go live regularly over on Purple Pocket Podcast. Me and my co-host, MC Rap, the Purple MLK, because he's bringing all the fans together. That's it. Watch me there. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. If you leave a comment, after you subscribe, you enter my contest. The rules are in the description below. Now let's get started on my 53-man roster 3.0. Now, put this together pretty rapidly. It's not perfect, and I did rank the players in order, but they're in that range. I don't exactly have them in the exact order as I list them as their most valuable, but let's get started anyways. You can criticize me all you want in the comments below. How often do you get to criticize someone and hopefully win a contest? So do that. Tell me what you think after this. I want to know. I will have my my 4.0 after the game next week, and then I'll do a final, a final one, probably live, and we'll see what happens. All right. Let's go with let's just go down the list. My number one. Let me get rid of Thielen here. I'm not, you know, I, I just put him out there. Let's go with the first one. I got Justin Jefferson, wide receiver. He's our best player on the team. Daniel Hunter, outside linebacker. Harrison Smith, safety. Dalvin Cook, running back at number four. Adam Thielen, number five, wide receiver. Still think he's got it. I still think he's got it, guys. I got uh, Zadarius Smith, outside linebacker. He's looking good in this. In this uh, practice that we got going on with the San Francisco 49ers, yeah, I, I hear all sorts of good things. And we'll talk. Uh, we're going to go live in about a half an hour, so I'll talk about it more then on the uh, Purple Pocket Podcast. Me and MC Rap, we'll talk about it then. Uh, Kurt Cousins, I got at number seven. Christian Derisaw, expect huge things, blowing out holes in that uh, defensive line. Christian Derisaw, left tackle. Brian O'Neill, right tackle. Still got it. Okay, Eric Kendricks, number 11, still got it, still got it. He's still got plenty of life left in him, let, let us in tackles last year. K.J. Osborne, looking good. Look, oh, I, I think I gave him an extra E. Sorry about that. I just spelled his name correctly. All right, Patrick Peterson, forgive any spelling mistakes. <laughs> K.J. Osborne, Patrick Peterson, number 12. Got Lewis Seen. I... If you saw my Please Forgive Me video, he played excellent. I got to see some uh, all-22 tape. He looked awesome. Um, let's see. Andrew Boo Jr., I think he'll get the the penalties out of his system. One of the one of the guys uh, that watch the show regularly, he brought to my attention that he didn't they didn't give up man, he didn't give up many yards like like at all his direction. So there's a lot of good things that came out of came out of Vanderboo Jr. and he's probably our only pure cover corner at this at this point. Peterson being a little older, he's probably second line. Dantzler eh, a little bit maybe, but I think in that order, that's uh, the pure cover corner out of him. Uh, Ed Ingram, 15. He's our starting right guard. I had him up. I want up up this high. He's our starting right guard in practice today. Showed out. He was an he was our starting right guard. He showed out in the game. He earned it. Let's go. They made the right decision. They did it early enough to get that get, and try to get that um, cohesiveness together before the first game. I love it. Great job, guys. Now we just need to talk about center. And hey, I'm still looking out at left guard. I want the best player. Cleveland's the guy. Then he's the guy. But we got some good we got some good depth here. All right, so Ed Ingram, Ty Chandler, uh, running back. I moved him way up here. I am putting my money where my mouth is. He is awesome. He's our future. 
I say, hey, if we're looking good, if Cook um, is a cap casualty, I kind of still expect Cook to still be here next year, Ty Chandler to take over in 2024. But, hey, I'm also looking at Kenny Nwongu right after him. He impressed me now that I've seen him catch a ball and he looked good doing it and was good in space and had good vision. He is everything I didn't say he was and I in that last game, and I, 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 I love him. They played better than Alexander Madison. There's a highlight of Alexander Madison running straight into the um, the guy that Darisaw was blocking. Just ran straight into him. And Kenny Nwongu and Ty Chandler got great vision. I And they're explosive. So much faster than Alexander Madison. Sorry, Alexander Madison. You did good for us. Hey, it's... You, you can go to greener pastures and get a starting job somewhere else. Uh, you're in the last year of contract. It's unfortunate the business that it is. But these two guys, I think, are our future. I love it. We get where we got a good future, guys. A good future in the offensive positions. Receiver and running back. Uh, Cameron Dantzler, no, number 18. Harrison Phillips, uh, 19. Actually, he's starting to look better than I expected. Better than I expected, I think. That's why I got him up here. Jordan Hicks, I still got him up pretty high. I haven't seen a whole lot of him yet, but I I, I like him. I like him. He's, he's done good things in practice. Irv Smith Jr., sheer talent. I got him up this high. I'm going to keep him there. Uh, 21. Let me move it up a little bit. Got DJ Wanham, outside linebacker. Armand Watts, defensive line. Cameron Bynum, safety at 24. Dalvin Tomlinson, 25. I'm still giving him the benefit of the doubt. He's playing defensive end now. I got CJM. I have moved him down a little bit. I'm Probably in the next turn, I'll probably move him down farther. I got Ezra Cleveland. He may be a candidate to move down a little bit. Um, I, I'll, I'm giving him a chance, though. I want to. I'll, I'll pay more attention in this next game if he plays more. James Lynch, D-line. I still like his... Uh, I still like his motor, man. I still like this guy, although he's still a candidate to move down. Amir Smith-Marset, wide receiver, probably a candidate to move even higher. Um, I moved him up a little bit. He looked good. He looked really good to me. He had a he had a little bobble there, but he was so wide open, it didn't matter in that game. So uh, Brian Osamoa probably could have moved this guy up. Still kind of holding him back because he's a rookie, but I love his play. It, it's He's doing really good. Alexander Madison, running back. I moved him down so far on this list. Um, I could probably move him down farther, but I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. He's still a good player. Um, he's gonna, He can start for another team. He can. And he's got trade value. And, hey, sorry, Alexander Madison. I know you don't like to hear it, but the, it's a compliment. We think you got trade value. It's just that you're in the last year of your contract and are going to deserve more money. You're going to deserve more money, and we might as well take advantage of it, considering we have two backups. Uh, Myron Mitchell, wide receiver, great catch, man. That was such an awesome catch, and that's all you did in college. That's all you did in college. I have a make in the team still. I, I had him making last week too. Uh, Patrick Jones the third probably could have moved him up. Um, Want to see more, but all I hear is good things about him, man. All I hear is good things. Chris Reed, I moved him down a little bit. Maybe could move him down farther. Uh, he, I guess he had a wrap on his leg today. He may have got injured in the game. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see if he plays in this next preseason game. But he's kind of fell out of favor. He's a backup left guard now. And honestly, fighting with Hinton. Um, Kyle Hinton, who I think had a pretty good game. Uh, Josh Mateus, I got him back making the team as a force safety. Because I think he I think he plays like the, defen- uh, the defensive coaches want him to. And if you go watch my safety video a while back, I liked... I liked all the safeties at, at some aspect of their game. Dorn, size, and little did I know that he, he laid a hit and caused a fumble late in the game. I don't have him making the team, although I like his size. We just got an embarrassment of riches at running back, wide receiver, and safety. What can I say? 
And now I think kind of outside linebacker too. And inside linebacker for that matter. We got we got those are those are the positions that we're looking really good in. Um so Meyer Mitchell, Patrick Jones the third, Chris Reed, uh Josh Mateus, I just talked about him, Metellus, Shandon Sullivan, not seen a whole lot from him. Keen Benjamin around that area, not moving him down too far. Tristan Jackson. I saw him burn a San Francisco guy in one-on-one drills today. Just embarrassed him. Embarrassed him. He's looking good, and he looked good in that game. And he kind of reminds me of K.J. Osborne a lot. A lot. All right? So, in fact, I think Tristan probably has more of that 50-50 ball, um, being able to go get it, because he does have an elite leaping ability. Then in probably K.J. Osborne. K.J. Osborne has a little shorter arms. But, and he's a little shorter than Tristan. Uh, so there's a little more of that in him. Uh, but I don't think he's as refined right now as KJ Osborne. KJ Osborne really worked on his craft, came out in year two and balled out. Uh, expect big thing. And he's been a darling at camp. So Tristan, you're making the team as of right now. Uh, Caleb Evans, cornerback. What do we got here? Uh, Ole Udo. Uh, I have making the team. Because they kind of have them that way on the depth chart. It's him or Brandle, I think, are, are going to make the team. And right now, I think they got him as uh, the next guy up. And, he, and he's been around. I'm trying to fix that. Uh, Janarius Robinson, although I haven't heard or seen much of him, um, I still think his college makes him so worth it to see what happens. So I got Janarius uh, Robinson. Uh, Jalen Twyman. Kind of a similar deal, young player still got a shot of, of making this, you know, making a splash, but he has fell out of favor with me a little bit. I moved him down this far. Uh, Kellen Mond, I have moved up, if you notice, and I probably could have moved him up farther, but I'm being conservative. I'm not going crazy over one game, but I, ha- you know, obviously I have him making the team. Zach Davidson, I have moved down um, a little bit. I, I got a little overzealous. With him, Troy Dye, I moved down. Garrett Bradbury, center at 45. Jesse Davis, offensive guard. I've added Schlotman to the 40-man, or the 53, because he did in that second-string offensive line, and now we we need a backup center, and nobody's come forward, and Schlotman has won his backup job back, I think. And so I got him making the team. I don't have Chris Reed in the center mix anymore. Who knows? Maybe that will change. But uh, Austin Schlotman. Now, Schlotman could be a situation where he doesn't make the dress team, and Chris Reed could be the backup uh, for emergency. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to risk a, the center position in a game. So we better be sure of who's going to be um, snapping the ball. So we got uh, Jesse Davis, offensive guard, still making it. Although he's lost his job, it's we all know Ed Ingram is going to have that, uh, and uh, Johnny Munt and Ben Ellison I got down at 48, 49. Then I got Greg Joseph, Jordan Berry, Andrew DePolo, DePola, and of course he who should not who he who should not be playing football, Sean Mannion playing 53. I'm sorry, Sean. Uh, in fact, I have thought about having cut him. We would keep two quarterbacks on the 53, and then we'd go out if, and I don't think Sean Mannion would take a practice squad job, probably offer him a coaching gig, uh, or he'd sit out the season. But I don't think he would take a practice squad job at, at this, in this point in his career. It's not a, much, not a lot of money, and he's made money. So putting Sean Mannion potentially off the 53. I will talk to you more about it after this next game. But if we were to cut Sean Mannion, we'd go out and find a uh, young quarterback project that we can put on the practice squad, giving us maybe even two, and giving them a tryout on the uh, practice squad and see what they're like. I I think that is the smarter way to go. Offer Sean Mannion some assistant coaching job Get his get his career started in that in that field. This is a perfect opportunity for you, man. 
I know you want to be a Viking. And, hey, I'm not going to be disappointed if we keep with him. We have three wide receivers. But I don't want these guys to be gone. And that's uh, a, a – um, who do I got here? Let me talk about some people. Uh, Jalen Naylor I don't have making the team. B.C. Johnson I don't have making the team. Uh, Blake Lynch right now I don't have making the team. Albert Wilson I don't have making the team on this list. So I would rather have one of those guys over the third quarterback that has never won a game, has only won th one touchdown in any of his starts. So that's it, guys. That's my 53 3.0. This is... Skull World brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. Follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Skull World. That's it for today. Skull Vikings. See you next time. Cue the music.